Warning. For the 2018 annual New Fane meeting at Union Hall on March 6th, 2018, here we are. The legal voters of the town of New Fane, Vermont are hereby notified and warned that pursuant to Title 17, Vermont statutes, Section 2655, they are to meet at the Union Hall in New Fane, Vermont on Tuesday, March 6, 2018 at 9 a.m. to act upon the articles below. Our, our uh, presiding officer, Carol Hesselbach, will open the polls. The polls will be open until 7 o'clock tonight, and that is to vote on Article 1, which will be voted by Australian ballot. So, I just need to get things closer. <laughs> um, before we proceed, I have a few announcements about today's business. Uh, Emily Long, our representative for, uh, to the legislature, and Jeanette White, our senior senator from Wyndham County, are here to report on this year's legislative session and answers, answer questions uh, after my opening remarks. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Pete, can you hear me? No. Pete, can you hear me? No. Yeah? Not good? Um, hmm. Weird? Okay, well, if everyone's quiet, then you'll hear me. <laughs> I'll get a little closer. There's better, huh? Uh, we'll recess town meeting at 9.30 for the Newfane School Meeting. The Newbrook Elementary School 6th grade is selling baked goods and beverages for your sustenance to get you through the morning. And they will also be selling hot soup and wicked good macaroni and cheese to take home to nourish you for lunch at the end of the meeting. So I hope you all brought your money to help support their trip to Montreal in the spring. This meeting is being recorded by the Brattleboro Community Television. You can watch it later if you don't get enough right now uh, on cable channel 10 and online at brattleborotv.org. They ask that anyone speaking at the meeting please stand and state your name, speak directly into the microphone so that viewers in the room and at home can hear you. Our, our BCTV tech has asked me to please ask everybody to come up and use a microphone. So at this time, I ask that those who are not legal voters in the town of Newfane to please make yourselves a known. Jan Fry, Randy Hohut, Jeanette White, and Shannon Meckel, our town administrator. All right, so uh, you can speak at the pleasure of the body, but you may not vote in Newfane. Uh, but we welcome you and are glad you're here. Uh, are there any Newfane voters who are new or who have never before attended Newfane's town meeting? Uh, please stand up and be recognized. Please, please, yeah, this is great. So please tell us who you are. Thank you. Th welcome. Welcome, everyone. So if you have any questions, just ask us. Uh, in a small town, we all become familiar with each other after a while, and after a while, it becomes awkward to ask somebody what their name is because you recognize their face. So I invite you all right now to reach out to someone you don't know and introduce yourself. Take a minute and do that. <laughs> All right, that's great. We'll, con we'll have a recess when you can continue these new acquaintanceships. 
Uh, it's wonderful to see new attendees, and it's always good to see the new Fane citizens who make it a priority to come to town meeting. You are today's legislators. Uh, your votes will determine our town budget and our policy for the next year. But we have to be aware that you who are here today represent only a fraction of the new Fane electorate. Uh, last year, this body passed a non-binding resolution to become an open and accepting community that would welcome and protect the rights of immigrants and refugees. Later this morning, we are going to hear a report from the Opening and Accepting Town Committee. But what I'm wondering is what this, this group, this body that's here this morning, would consider doing to make town meeting a welcoming town meeting. Um, I wonder if there are barriers to participation that we can identify and perhaps remedy. There are 1,200 registered voters in the town of Newfane, and there are fewer than 100 of them here today. Um, in the 10 years that I've been moderating this meeting, I've witnessed our local authority dwindle and regional and state authority and central, centralization grow. Um, that's a fact, not an opinion. But it leaves me wondering if there are civic issues other than town budget and tax collection that we might want to discuss and even to act on. In Newfane, we came together in the aftermath of Tropical Storm Irene which was a splendid consequence of a natural disaster. I'm wondering, can we find ways to come together without the catalyst of an obvious tragedy? Dwindling attendance at town meeting is a civic tragedy. It's eroding not just our town, but towns all over Vermont. It's an issue we discuss at the annual moderator training workshop that you send me to. So there's some comfort in knowing we are not alone. Um, but there's also hope. Some towns are bucking this, this trend by changing when they hold town meeting, by including a community meal before, during, or after town meeting, and uh, by providing childcare. Those are a few of the known initiatives that have been successful. But I'm wondering, what would happen if each of you who is here today made a point of bringing someone next year who's never been? A personal invitation. Just tell them how good the, the coffee and, and baked goods are. It's worth it, right? Um, I would like to know if others, of, if others of you have the same concern that I have about local civic engagement and if so, let's start a conversation and brainstorm ways to improve our town meeting by, by making it more inclusive. Thank you for listening to me. And whoever owns the black Honda four door with license plate 6279, you're parked in a driveway on North Street. And I'm sure the people who live there would, um, maybe someone, maybe Ellen, so, someone would take Ellen's keys and move it for her? Is there someone willing to, to move? Jen, Jen, thank you. So Ellen is right here and she'll, uh, she's coming. Ellen, Ellen, you want to raise your hand? Here's Jen Fry. Ellen, she'll, thank you, Jen. All right. So, that's the only opinion I'll express today that's not related to procedure. Um, but because it's been a year since we last met, let, let me remind you of a few of those procedures. This is your meeting. My job is to make it happen. We'll follow Robert's, we'll follow Robert's rules of order because that's state law. We can change Robert's rules. We cannot change state law. For instance, if we wanted to make it 25 people who wanted a paper ballot, we could do that at the beginning of the meeting. Once the meeting starts, uh, or Robert's Rules says just seven. It's an example. It's not a requirement. Uh, we can suspend the rules to allow non-registered Newfane voters to address the assembly. And we can, ooh, Robert's rules are designed for the assembly to conduct its business in a fair and orderly way. 
So here's some basics. You must be recognized by the moderator to speak. Please stand up, speak up, and state your name after you've been recognized. Address your comments to the moderator. A motion must be made, seconded, and repeated by the moderator before discussion of an article can begin. The person who makes the motion has the right to speak first. When there are many people who want to talk, the moderator will try to alternate between those in favor and those opposed to the motion on the floor to allow for the widest possible discussion of an article. An article can be amended and an amendment can be amended, but all amendments must be germane to the original article. We will vote on an article either when no one wants to speak anymore or when the body decides to call the question. A member of the assembly must be recognized to call the question. Blurting out, call the question, doesn't work. Because when someone has been recognized by the chair uh, and makes the motion to call the question, someone else has to second it and the body has to vote and it is a motion that requires a two-thirds majority to end discussion. A point of order is not the same as a point of information. Point of order interrupts the proceedings on an issue of procedure. So it's when the moderator makes an error, a member of the assembly should call a point of order and bring it to the body's attention so it can be remedied. As a moderator, I am very grateful for our hive mind and for the other seasoned moderators in the audience. Uh, a point of information is just that, a request for information. It should be addressed to the moderator, who will then field it to whomever is able to provide the information requested. Colonel Roberts had a lot more rules. Not knowing them should not be a barrier to your participation. And if you want to do something but don't know how to proceed, ask me. If I don't know, I'll ask Gary Delius, who has again graciously volunteered to be our parliamentarian. Together, we can figure this out. I know some of you are uncomfortable speaking in public. Nevertheless, what you have to say is important for all of us to hear. Remember that Robert's Rules dictates that you address your remarks to the moderator. So if you are nervous about speaking, pretend there's no one else in the room and just talk to me, all right? Finally, listen to each other. We're living in a rancorous, a time of rancorous and uncivil discourse, but we're Vermonters with a history of bucking national trends. Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times recently wrote, quote, it should be possible both to believe deeply in the rightness of one's own cause and to hear out the other side. Civility is not a sign of weakness, but of civilization. Let us be passionate in our beliefs and polite in their expression. You will find statistics, the vital statistics for the town that begins on page 137 of the town report. This year there are eight deaths and eight births, so we're holding steady. Um, but we're able to convene today because of all the people who have worked before, who have gone before us, and what we do today will affect those who come after. Um, there are lots of ways to serve the town. Attending town meeting is one, volunteering on committees, working for the town, and running for town office. This year's town report is dedicated to Todd Lurie, Lolly, a man who's done all of the above. Todd's not here. Uh, we have a full slate of candidates for all, uh, no, we do not have a full slate of candidates for the town and school positions this year. And there are candidates who've expressed interest in some of those positions for a write-in campaign. I have to remind you that there, this is a polling place. There is no electioneering inside the building, including no political literature buttons or other materials that can be displayed inside this room. Um, a voter, however, is allowed to bring a cheat sheet into the voting booth as long as you don't leave it there. So, if there is no objection, we will now hear from Senator White and Representative Long. Hearing no objection.
come up. Um, so can you hear me now? Thank you. Um, I was saying Jeanette wanted me to go first because I'm a resident of Newfane, but I always defer to my senators. <laughs> but I just wanted to um, say thank you for having us here to speak today. We have had, as um, is, I say every single year I come here, I tell you what a um, unusual year this year seems to be, and I actually think that this is another one of those unusual years where um, we are facing a lot of challenges, challenges coming out of Washington, um, challenges to meet the needs um, of our constituents and our residents in this state who really um, are, are, some of them are really struggling to make ends meet. And so those are the, those are the overarching uh, uh, issues, you know, that we're facing up in Montpelier. Um, we have been able to, we have actually a year, a, a, a month, a week earlier this year for um, crossover. So our bills that have come out have been, we, we've been very intensely uh, working on the bills that have come out of our policy committees. There's still one more week for crossover for uh, money committees, but policy committees just had their crossover date, which is actually a week earlier than normal. Um, so we've had some very intense votes on the floor recently, uh, including some gun legislation. We have just, um, in the House, have just passed out of the Ways and Means Committee an education finance reform bill that has taken a qu quite a sharp shift from what it was a couple weeks ago. I know I've met with some residents about this bill, uh, and it's just right now being sent to the Education Committee where I serve, so we'll be looking at that pretty um, closely over the next few days. I have to actually go up next Monday because we have to understand what this bill is, and we haven't had a good look at it yet. But it does appear that I'm a lot less concerned about this bill than I was about the last one. I know I met with Dan DeWalt, and I, we expressed some of our shared concerns about the last one. So I think this one is a little bit better. It actually um, does keep income sensitivity. As challenging as income sensitivity is, it really does help Vermonters to be able to pay their um, property tax bills because two-thirds of Vermonters actually do pay based on income, not on their property. And so it does retain that. It has quite a few other provisions in it. It will, I've had a lot of emails from folks about um, Social Security and the tax on Social Security. There is, um, there are a, a, a segment of our residents that all already don't pay tax on Social Security, but this bill actually does expand those who will not have to pay tax on Social Security to, the, to low and middle income Vermonters. There will still be a tax on Social Security for high income Vermonters. Can't remember off the top of my head the, the dollar amount, because I still haven't seen this bill. And like I said, it's still got to pass the House got to come out of our committee, it's got to go to appropriations, got to pass the House, then it goes over to the Senate. So that's a pretty important bill. Please stay in touch on that one. And I hope you will also stay in touch on any other issues that come up because they come up pretty regularly. So I'll pass it over to Jeanette because I know we don't want to take up too much time. Thanks. So I'm just going to um, talk about a couple of the things that we've passed out of my committees. In the um, Senate, we serve on two committees, so I'm on Judiciary in the morning and <clears throat> I chair Government Operations in the afternoon. And in Judiciary, we've passed out, as Emily said, this seems to have been a really intense year. And I, I, there are a couple issues that we've taken up, a couple bills that didn't weren't very intense, but most of them have been so intense that they have, um, I feel drained when I leave there every single day. So we are moving, um, doing some adjustments to our uh, court system so that we can treat um, up to 19 year olds in family court instead of criminal court. And ultimately our goal is to reach 21 because we know about brain development now and think that's very important. If there is a serious offense, it can be moved down back to criminal court, but it will start in family court. We think that's very important. We just passed, um, as Emily said, the gun legislation, which we're calling the extreme risk or red flag um, bill, and it allows for guns to be taken for 14 days 
with a court order, but the court order can be obtained immediately by electronic means or phone. Um, the, one of the least published or publicized bills that we passed was called S-105. And every time you sign on to something and you go down to the bottom of whatever that contract is and you hit accept, you are accepting unconscionable terms. And we've made that uh, those unenforceable in Vermont. Let me just give you an example. So an employer hire, you get your dream job, you are um, sign the contract. The contract says, this is just one example, if you have a sexual harassment issue, you have to report it within six hours. You, c you can have one minute for a deposition. You, if you want to uh, pursue it, you have to go to Nevada because that's where their headquarters are. You can choose from a list of their arbitrators that they give you. They just all happen to be vice presidents of the company and they charge $1,000 an hour. Of course, if you only have a minute, it's not gonna cost you too much, but they're gonna sit there and talk for a long time. And you've given up your right to a jury trial and any collective um, action. You, every time you s accept one of those, whether you buy something, sign up for a phone contract, that's the kind of thing that you're giving up. And the Supreme Court has upheld those. So we have made those unconscionable provisions illegal in Vermont and they won't be enforceable. <laughs> it, <laughs> no, it, isn't a, it isn't a very sexy bill and it hasn't gotten a lot of publicity but I think it's probably one of the most important that we're going to pass because we are seeing our individual rights eroded every single day and this is an example of it. So in government operations um, we deal with elections, municipal issues, that kind of stuff. We, um, I'm just gonna, we just prohibited corporate donations to ca uh, candidate campaigns and um, political parties. <laughs> hey, well, remember, all of this still has to pass the House and it has to then go to the governor to be signed. So we'll see what happens there. And we have established a an independent panel made up of five people and created a position in, at the cabinet level that we will address systemic racism across all three branches of government. Um, so in the Senate as a whole, we passed $15 minimum wage. Um, the, I don't even know what this says. Oh, the purchasing of drugs we've allowed, but I just saw this morning that the, um, Secretary of the Agency of Human Services said it's not gonna work, but we'll, we passed it anyway. So we have, um, we're, a lot more has happened, and we continue to, and what Emily said about the crossover, for those of you who don't understand that, if a bill starts in the Senate, it had to get out of the committee by last Friday, or it won't be um, dealt with this year, that means it's this biennium, that means it's dead until the next biennium when some of us hope to be reelected maybe. Um, and if it isn't out of the House, it won't be dealt with by the Senate. So thanks, and I have to say it really is an honor to serve, and I know every year I say this, but every year it, more and more of you probably have reason to be angry at me for some reason, so I still appreciate it ever much. Thanks. You want to take Let's find out what the uh, body wants to do. We have um, f about four and a half minutes before we have to recess for the school meeting. Would you like to spend that time asking questions? All right. Myra Fassler, stand up and tell people who you are. Can you tell us um, the, some of the uh, aspects of the gun legislation that you've been talking about? Uh, I'll just quick touch on that and then I'll let Jeanette talk about hers because the House and the Senate passed 
two different versions of uh, gun legislation last week. Um, you heard Jeanette talk about the extreme risk or the red flag bill. We passed our own version of that. We felt that we wanted to go a little bit farther um, with the legislation than the Senate did. And so we added in a bill um, that we had passed out of our body, the House, last year, which was um, H422, if anyone remembers it. It was the domestic violence bill where um, a police officer can um, confiscate uh, weapons from a residence that when they've been called to a residence um, for a domestic violence call. Um, so we've added that back into this bill. We also added on to um, what the version of the Senate's 221 extreme risk bill, we added on making it a felony to have, um, to have weapons or guns on your body on a school property. So and well what we did is um, we did not add the domestic violence one because we felt that the extreme risk dealt with that we're going to take it up afterwards and the problem with that is that there's some constitutional issues around search and seizure and law enforcement is very nervous about if they go into a place can they search if a gun is in uh, full view they can take it but do they have the ability to search the entire house, the barn, the, the, all the outbuildings? And they're, they're nervous about the liability of that if they don't do it, and there are guns. And they're also nervous about it if they do it, and it's deemed to be unconstitutional. We did add um, to another bill around the storage of firearms. We added um, that you have to be 21 to purchase not to possess, but to purchase a gun, and that um, all, all transactions will have a background check. So that's what we've done. James Russell, South Ukraine, speaking of search and seizure. You, you need to eat. Uh, James Russell, South Ukraine. Regarding search and seizure, the law regarding a saliva test. Just hold it closer. The the law against search and the law for saliva test in order to detect drugs. Is there a provision to prevent that from being used in a DNA database? The uh, bill has passed the House. It has not come to the Senate yet. I can um, almost assure you that that provision around collecting saliva tests will not pass the Senate. Um, I can't be 100% sure, but I can be, as Ivory Soap says, 99 and 9 tenths or whatever it is, sure. I don't know uh, right. There's time for one more question. Yes. Dan. Uh, Dan DeWalt. The governor talked about um, he had a lot of plans for helping the opiate crisis, and he was talking about social services, but he was also swearing to not raise another penny in new taxes, and it was all sort of make-believe. So are you guys willing to actually buck the governor's uh, obstinacy and raise money to actually pay for the things which he wants? Uh, sure. <laughs> I can say I don't have any problem bucking the governor, but on the other hand, you know, we also have to think about all of our taxpayers who are struggling. Um, and so I have some serious issues around the budget that came from the governor. It's 41 million cut in um, Agency of Human Services, and that has some serious concerns. Jeanette will tell you that the House is um, dealing with the budget right now, and it'll, I think it'll um, be something we're going to have to work really hard on. He has asked us very clearly to not um, uh, have a budget that goes over, I think it's 2.5 or 2.3 cost of living increase. Um, but he has quite a few new initiatives in there as well. So what that would require are a lot more cuts. So um, those cuts are serious concerns to us. So we're, our, our appropriations committee right now is working very hard, trying to, first of all, understand the budget because it gets pretty challenging, and then um, try to find, mitigate the impacts of some of those uh, cuts that are being recommended, and, and some of them are pretty ugly, I'll tell you, to disability services and things like that. So 
Um, keep, stay tuned. Uh, we are going to try to pass a budget that meets the needs of all Vermonters. Okay. Jeanette, just really briefly. Very yeah. briefly. I, um, I am willing to, there are certain taxes and fees that I'm willing to um, raise in order to fund some of the programs that I think are necessary. The problem is, is that the governor would probably veto it and the House does not have a veto-proof majority. We do in the Senate, but the House doesn't. So we have to be very careful. Thank you all for having us here. The New Bay Town meeting will now recess till the conclusion of the school meeting. And if the New Bay District School Board would come up, the, the school, you'll find a warning for the New Bay School District on page three. The legal voters of the town of New Bay, Vermont, are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Union Hall in said town on Tuesday, March 6, 2018. Ken McFadden. Hey, I'm Luke Stafford from Williamsville. Bryn Tucker, New Fane. So Article 1, to, to elect the school district officers, this will be by Australian ballot. Don't forget to do that. Article 2, to compensate the directors of the New Fane School District $200 each. Do I hear a motion? Uh, I, I need, um, Gloria Cristelli has moved it, and who has seconded it? Please tell me your name again. Evelyn. Evelyn. Saroy. Okay, Evelyn Saroy. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, um, Article 2, to compensate the directors of the New Fane School District $200 each, is now on the floor. Uh, Gloria, you moved it. Would you like to speak to the bill? Could you please, can, can you come up and use the mic? Gloria Cristelli, Newfane. And I just feel it's a pittance. So that $200 a year, they deserve that plus more. Is there anyone else who wants to speak to Article 2? If there's no more discussion, are you ready for the vote? All right. An I vote means you are in favor of uh, compensating the directors of the New Fane School District for, by $200. A uh, no vote means you're not. So all those in favor, um, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the article passes. Article 3, to set the date of the annual meeting of the New Fane School District for the first Tuesday in March in the year of 2019. Is there a motion? That's Margaret Wimbauer has made the motion. Is there a second? Lynn Forrest has seconded it. Um, Margaret, would you like to speak to it? No. Uh, the, the article is to set the date of the annual meeting of the New Fane School District for the first Tuesday in March in the year of 2019. Is there any further discussion? An I vote means you are in favor of the article as written and a no vote means you're opposed. Are you ready for the vote? Yes. All right, all those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 3 passes. Article 4, to transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. This is all non-binding, and if you have something to say, please come up to a microphone. 
Are you headed to the microphone, Geraldine? Hi, uh, Gerald Julian Cisse, New Fane. Gee, that any better? Can you hear me? Um, so I'm hoping this comes under this section since it's related to the school. There's two pieces Just of information. You, you've got to get closer. I have to get closer there. Good. Thank you, Scott. Okay, great. So there's two pieces of information that I think it. There's two pieces of information that I would like to share to get a sense of the public's interest. Um, one has to do with the moving the um, the school budget, the Leland and Gray school budget, to town meeting. Um, currently, it and also the I don't know about the Newbrook, but as far as the high school budget, moving it to town meeting in the attempt of increasing voter participation. Um, when historically we get about 200 to 245, maybe this past year, year 17, we had 276 total votes out of five voting towns. If we moved it to town meeting, we probably would get in each respective town a much higher turnout. It would still be by Australian ballot because it's required um, and uh, people can come and go, they can vote the same hours, they can be here for the rest of the day. So, so that would be one attempt is to increase voter participation. Um, that. To move that has to be um, decided, I guess, through the West River uh, Modified Union District, or West River Mud. I call it warm mud. But anyway, um, so that annual meeting is April 3rd. That is when those things are decided. So I've already brought this up to the school board up at Leland and Gray, but I guess I would just want to get an idea do people want that to be pursued do you think that's a good opportunity to follow through on that so that would be one piece um so would you, would you like a show of hands is that okay all those who think this is a good idea to move the leland and gray budget meeting to a town meeting raise your hand and anyone opposed raise your hand and um so and the there's much more interest. Oh, totally. So, so with the the next follow through would be of those people who raise their hands. How many will go to the April third meeting, and where will it be? <laughs> it's at Leland and Gray Library at seven o'clock. Okay, Leland and Gray at seven o'clock on April third. And it's not that you have to so much attend, which it would be great, but um, that's where it would be pursued. So to take the step forward or not doesn't mean it'll happen by next year. It just means um, I know that our superintendent um, Bill Antone has said, you know, it's on the agenda. So let's see. So if I can go back and say, the majority of voters in Newfane would like that pursued, then I can do that. Okay? Yeah. All right. The second piece related to that is the actual budget. I mean, the ballot, how it's worded. It often, um, w the way it is a, stats, a state statute. So it's not something, again, that we can vote on, but it's something that we can express our opinion about. And then um, with Emily Long being on our board and our representative, she, we certainly have a good conduit there to find out, again, can this be done by the state? Because every, every town has to have the exact same wording. And the way that it's worded, it gives you what the percentage, what the actual um, dollar amount is, and then it says that if approved, it is a certain percentage of the equali an increase in the equalized pupil spending. Now, how many of you really understand that one? <laughs> so what happens, I mean, what happens is they give us the dollar amount, and then it gives us, so this would have been for this year, was our equalized spending was $20,080 per equalized pupil. This, pro this projected spending per equalized pupil is 4.6% higher than the spending for the current year. Now that's the equalized pupil spending, not the budget. But folks who may not know the nuances of it might see this, and last year it was a 12% increase. 
And so that might be misleading to one who doesn't follow it. What it actually does represent for the, the current budget, um, for the instance this year, is a negative 0.6. So our budget, our school budget this year was 0.6% lower than the current budget. I would like to have that piece of clarifying information added to the budget, to the ballot. That we say, yes, it's the amount to be voted, what it equals, what, it, what the amount is for per equalized pupil spending, how much it is higher than the current year in equalized pupil spending, and then positive, negative effect on the current dollar amount budget. So last year's budget, when it finally came through, it was uh, an increase in pupilized, the equalized pupil spending of 12% increase, but the actual budget amount was a decrease of 0 0.002. So we were totally level funded, but the ballot doesn't indicate that. So again, <laughs> this is state statute. Should that be pursued because just like voter participation, we need an informed, clear <laughs> ballot or, uh, um, you know, to be able to vote. We need the information. So, would you like, uh, am I on? Are you hearing me? Yeah. Would you like uh, a motion to rationalize the ballot on school, uh, school funding, the, the school vote? Would to, uh, I'm, I'm, well, or just would, would, would you would just how would you like how would you like to um, propose a motion to find out it's a it's a non-binding motion and just to find out what the audience feels okay go ahead Pete you have an idea <laughs> or I'm sorry she has to call on you I guess. Um, <laughs> sorry I, I need I need to um, Ken McFadden our school director has uh, asked to speak okay. so Thank you. Uh, just as a point of information, uh, the next budget that gets done for Leland and Gray will be a combined budget with Newbrook, Jamaica, and Townsend. It won't just be a Leland and Gray budget. Just, just so you know. Thank you. Right. Excellent. And um, so there does seem to be some more d discussion okay. before we. Find out. Um, Dan DeWalt? non-binding motion to move the budget vote to town meeting, which I think the, the meeting has already said yes to. Um, and then there is um, a new, so, so maybe you would amend that to just the second part. Yeah. Not really. All right. So because, because I can't keep up with everything, and I'm planning on watching the VCTV thing frequently. <laughs> and so I was wondering if you could tell me what the first motion is. Um, yeah. So she's doing her best. Um, I'd, I'd still. Um, it's up to you. Okay. So the motion is to move the budget. The, the the budget vote to town meeting day the the mud the mud budget vote to town meeting day and to include on the ballot information about the current year's budget compared to the prior year's budget. Carol, you got that? Yes. Great. Okay. Um, and Meg, no, Lisa, I'm sorry. Meg, I was right the first time. Meg, oh, help me with your last name. I'm just having a moment. Spicer is seconding it. 
Um, so actually, we now have a motion. Is there any further discussion? This was, yes. Gloria Criselli, please take a microphone. Just a question about the wording of current budget versus prior year budget, because the current budget would be what's happening right now, and it would be proposed budget. So I think there's a difference between saying we're going to get the percentages of the current budget. So Dan just said current and prior. I didn't read it all, but it said it's estimated of the proposed budget. So it, it says pro yeah. So, so there's a proposal to amend the uh, motion so that it says proposed budget. Actually, yeah, is that, actually is that correct? Does, it does. It does okay. say it within the. It, it's a paragraph long. I didn't read the entire thing, but it is. It does say the proposed budget. Well, just a minute. The, what we're voting on is what Dan Dan suggested. So, if there's something else, do you want to just correct that? Yeah. Right, and, and since this is all non-binding, I think we'll just accept that amendment unless there is an objection. Hearing none, the, the motion is now that um, to find out if you're interested in moving the MUD budget vote to town meeting day and to having the ballot have both the proposed budget and the current year's budget um, figures on the ballot. Are there any, is there any further discussion? Yeah. Question. Um, Adele, I mean, do we really need a motion for this at all? Wasn't it just a sense of the meeting? Because we can't really do it until, but fine, let's go. Well, it, we don't need a, a motion except one was made. So then we need to follow through. Uh, so if you, um, if, does everybody understand? A, a, Yes vote means we're going to try to, um, this is non-binding, but it certainly authorizes Geraldine to go and anyone else who wants to go and try to move this forward so that we have one day to vote um, on town meeting day and then uh, we also have a more rational, I'm sorry, that's an opinion, uh, we have more information on, uh, on the ballot about what we're voting on. So. If there are no questions, those who are in favor of this proposal, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those who are opposed, say no. So, Geraldine, I think you have your information. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And there's a question or comment? Yeah. Um, oh. Please come to a mic. Hi, I'm Katie Johnson from South Newfane. I just wanted to ask on follow-up about Susan Gunther Moore's position at the school. Was that preserved or was that cut? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. So the answer is yes. Uh, the position that is held by Susan Gunther Moore was preserved in the budget. Uh, is there any other discussion? Does anyone want to hear anything from our school directors? Do our school directors have anything they want to tell people? Whether they want to hear it or not? Yeah, okay. Whether you'd like to hear it or not. <laughs> I'm sorry, when I, if I stand up, I gotta pull this up. <laughs> the voice is still good, the eyes are going. Um, how's this? Okay. Um, the West River Modified Union School District meets on the third Monday of the month if anybody's interested to show up at a meeting. And the reorganizational meeting for this board and the Newbrook board will be held on Thursday the 8th at 6 o'clock. And if there's a snow day, it's going to be postponed till Monday the 12th at 6 o'clock at same place New, New Brook Elementary School Library and let's see and I will I, I will bring up I happen to be on that board so I will bring up the uh, town's interest in moving the budgets to town meeting day and that's all I have 
Oh, by the way, we got a beautiful looking solar field out behind the school. If nobody's uh, seen it yet, stop by. You can check the school website. There's actually a flyover by one of our citizens with a drone. Shows a nice, beautiful view back and forth to the river. Thank you. So uh, for those of you who need, uh, want your calendars out, the new, new Fane School District will meet Thursday the 8th, unless there's too much snow, in which case it will be on Monday the 12th at 7, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock in the Newbrook Elementary School Library. And the modified Union District School, organi uh, school District will be meeting on the third Monday. Third Monday at the Leland and Gray Library, 7 o'clock. All right. Um, it's a time when people can make a real difference in their schools because the school district is just being organized. Uh, is there any other uh, business, non-binding business, to come before the school board? Um, if there's, it, oh yes, Chris Campany. Uh, Chris Campany, new fan. Just wanted to say thanks for all the work you guys have done during a period of great upheaval and change. Um, so thanks for all the time that you put into it, especially when you don't get a lot of people sh showing up for the votes. It's probably, I mean, we've got a vote, but it's probably also in some perverse way a recognition of the work that you've done. <laughs> but, uh, but thanks for all that you've done. Before they go, I do want to recognize that Scotty is here. Uh, he's not a Newfane voter, but if the if anyone has a, a particular question or Scotty, if you have anything in particular you want to say, I need to find out if it's all right first. Is there any objection to Scotty Tabachnik, our principal, addressing our group? Hearing none. Scotty, take a take a mic. Hi, I'm Scotty Tabachnik. I'm school principal. See if I can do this well. At Newbrook Elementary School. Um, this is my fourth year at Newbrook, and um, for those of you that know me, I'm a pretty uh, uh, verbal person, so I'm going to try to keep this short. Um, I do want to start by thanking Ms. Van Pamelin and our students for being here. They're raising money for their annual trip to Montreal, which I've gone on twice, and it is a blast, and we learn a lot together. And uh, I really appreciate all the help from the families. I also want to thank the members of our um, PTO that are here. We've got a very strong PTO at Newbrook. And um, along with our board, they've been very supportive of our students and our enrichment programs. And I want to say thank you to them. Um, just some quick highlights. Um, I've got a lot of good news. Um, I feel like uh, there's a lot of, uh, of news that can make us a little sad right now. And, and you know, we do have some things to highlight um, in our community. Um, First of all, we're, we're up to 120 students again, which is great. Our school um, has, uh, we've got, we're K to six, and uh, we've got one class that's 14 and one class that's 15, and the others are 19 or 20, which is very nice class sizes. Um, we're, we've implemented um, a new curriculum this year for mathematics called Engage New York, which is um, heavily vetted by teachers all around the country and um, is aligned to the Common Core. Our teachers are, um, are they're working so hard. It's, it's really hard to get started with a new curriculum. And they're doing a great job, and I'm seeing evidence of growth um, throughout our building. This year, um, I want to thank Mr. Pat Mace, our custodian. He, uh, he along with our board and along with um, some local um, collaborators, we are now, our phone system is 911 compliant which means that if you pick up a phone in a certain classroom and call 911, that classroom will be the place where they respond to. Um, that is new for us. Our, our phone system was 20 years old, and, um, and it was due for an update. We got a grant, and uh, the board matched um, the grant. with. We had to match it. Um, but now we have all new phones and a 911 compliance system. I also want to thank our farm to school uh, folks. Um, if you don't know, our, our, our program is... Uh, is um, our farm to school program is really heavily uh, supported, not only by our PTO, but also by our staff. I want to thank Ms. Emily Bullock and Ms. Heather Sperling uh, for being so heavily involved in our, um, our farm to school program. I believe 
that, um, that making uh, education local and by showing children um, not only health but also economically how important it is to get your food locally is a very important part of what we do. Uh, we started uh, composting two years prior to the law and, um, and of course we're recycling as well at school. I'm on evening program nights when we have a lot of parents and lots of times our, our, our recycle bins and our trash cans will get mixed up. Now our students know better, but I don't think all of our families do, and that's kind of a funny thing when you think about it. It's, uh, and and I, I guess that's our next step. Um, we just won a, or earned a $15,000 implementation grant that was written by um, our Farm to School um, Committee. I want to thank them for that. Um, I can expect that it, over the coming months we'll be purchasing a salad bar, which um, our new um, chef Chris um, who was an amazing hire. Um, he was part of our farm to school and part of, our, um, part of the writing of the grant, but he's also such a gung-ho guy, and he's buying, um, he's buying local foods, and he's getting kids interested. In fact, I just got some uh, data last week that said that our breakfast, our, our, our school breakfast went from 29% of our, of our population eating school breakfast to 59% in one year. And our school lunch, which is, this is actually a more significant thing, because I think that there were just some shifts in dynamic for breakfast. But our school lunches went from 61% to 71%. That is huge. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, what we're doing in the kitchen and what we're doing around the building to show kids how important it is to feed their bellies before they feed their minds. Um, I do want to say thank you not only to our school board, but also to our um, energy committee, who we really lucked out, folks. I don't know if, if everybody realizes how lucky we got to have, um, to have our solar field built. It started with Chris Pratt prior to um, my, uh, my hire and with the, far, with the, uh, with the um, I'm sorry, with the Energy Committee's hard work and our diligence, we went through a contract period, with they, with the company went into fault and somehow we managed for the terms to turn over to a new company and we got it built prior to uh, any changes in taxation. So we are now going to start earning $26,000 a year on that piece of land that was sitting. And uh, we're also going to be getting 15% off of on all our electric, which um, we're now heating primarily with electric. So um, this is really going to make a huge difference to our energy footprint, to our show of responsibility, responsible energy use. We're, not, we're going to be burning very few fossil fuels on campus, which I think is good for kids as well. So I think that that was just a total boon and, and very lucky, and it was due to the hard work. And I just want to say thanks. We also completed our kitchen improvement, which was a big deal. We finished the kitchen improvement. We got a new chef, and we're, we're, we're really um, going strong in the kitchen, and we're serving great food. Um, I would, if any of you in this room would like to come by for lunch sometime, please send me an email, and I'll make sure that that can happen. <laughs> but, staff. And, and that's a very important point, Joyce, that I missed. Um, and I don't have the numbers, but um, a lot of staff members are paying up every day and eating food at school, which um, really models for the children and really shows that we're all in it together, which I think is great. Thank you, Joyce. Um, I also want to say that uh, the WCSU, um, at the beginning of the year, our superintendent, um, my boss, Mr. Bill Antone, um, uh, well, I'm not sure how the relationship began, but we are in consultation regularly throughout this year with a man named Rob Evans, who's doing a safety audit for all our schools. Um, I believe that we were really forward thinking with our planning for um, crisis situations, um, but now we have a man from the AOE who was a uh, uh, state uh, police officer, um, and he's been coming and collaborating with us throughout this year. This is not a response to anything um, brand new, but he's been collaborating with us throughout the year, and we've had three meetings now, I believe, with Rob, and what we're doing is we're like, he's giving us homework, and we're turning in our homework, and we're showing him our current plans, and he's giving us feedback, um, we're drawing maps. I, I went to the New, Newbrook Firehouse the other day because I'd never been inside there. By the way, that's, that's a beautiful firehouse you guys built, um, and you have beautiful gear. Um, but but uh, I went down there and I drew a map of the room because if we would, God forbid, have to reunify if, if we needed to leave the building because there was a, a, uh, a, uh, something turned over on the road or something out front, um, we would reunify at that building and, uh, and we now have a, a firm plan on how we'd get um, children back in touch with their families and how we would communicate. Um, lastly, I want to say that we're, uh, we're hiring this year. Um, we're looking for a part-time nurse. We're also looking for a uh, one-year position for our, in our third grade classroom. 
And we're, learning, we're looking for a um, library media specialist as well. Um, I want to say thank you to Ms. Now, and I'm sure all of you do as well. Ms. Now has been a lifelong, hardworking, unbelievably um, hardworking person, and she's been working for the kids of New Fane and Brookline for years. And I want to say personally thank you to her. Um, I don't think she's here right now. She'd be in Brookline. But um, <laughs> uh, let's give it up for Ms. Now. Um, lastly, in closing, I just want to say that I believe um, the last few hires that we've made at school have been really incredible. And I think the reasons why we're attracting these people to our school is because of the leadership at the WCSU level. Um, Mr. Bill Antone and his staff are really showing folks that uh, we mean business. Um, I also think that our school is starting to gain momentum in terms of um, some of these uh, new initiatives that we're underway with. And I just want to say thank you to my board uh, because they've been nothing but supportive. And, uh, and they, really, uh, they really ask hard questions that I think are um, the questions that need to be asked in order to improve a school. And uh, we're always looking for improvement. Please, if you have any questions or if you would like to come by the school and look at our new tiny little backup furnace or, or take a walk around our solar field, it's not our solar field, but the solar field, um, I'd be happy to arrange that. If you'd like to come by for lunch, please let me know. I always have time for you. Thank you. Is there any other business that may legally come before the school district meeting? Uh, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Who, who said that? And your name is? Ingrid Longo. Ingrid Longo, and it was seconded by Pete Van Loan. Uh, so all those in favor of adjourning till this time next year. Please indicate so by saying aye. aye. And those opposed by saying no. Thank you very much. Uh, the town meeting will resume in about two minutes. Okay, uh, we have some announcements. So you guys can continue to, to get your baked goods and, um, but if you could, Maybe bring it the level down so that you can hear the announcements. Um, we'll start. I wanted uh, Neil Pelsu. Do you want to come up and, and make your announcement? In addition to my attention, I'd like your cooperation too, please. Grace Cottage has asked me to share with you that uh, periodically. Grace Cottage Hospital, Brattleboro Memorial Hospital, and the Brattleboro Retreat do a critical needs uh, assessment health uh, survey. And, I'm and I've been asked, been asked to... I think you have to get it very close. Um. Yep, I do. Anyway, um, they conduct this survey to find out what the residents of the areas that they serve, what they feel are uh, health needs, critical health needs, things that we may need, uh, new programs or modification of old ones, have an opportunity also to uh, indicate to them uh, programs that are working, are helpful, and that might, might be strengthened or at least support for them to continue. So the surveys are right here. And we've got some, I guess some people have kept them for uh, souvenirs. But if you really need a survey of the, uh, of the ballpoint pens, go up to the hospital. They have them by the broad gauge carload up there. Uh, if you could leave them here so that uh, you could fill out the survey. And then just simply put the survey back in the box and I'll collect it uh, tonight. But uh, it only take a couple of, uh, couple of minutes, they say. Uh, so plan on three. Uh, and if you would do that, it would be very helpful for these three institutions to improve the health programs that serve our area. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. 
the the um, Wyndham County Historical Society would like you to know and invite you to their fourth annual soup supper on March 25th, a Sunday afternoon. Uh, their soup from every town along the West River Railroad. There will be a silent auction and um, it's usually a lot of fun. Doors open at four o'clock, dinner is served at 5.30. Uh, the Valley Lions Club, it turns 50, is that right? 50, 50 years old this year. They're celebrating with a raffle um, and you can get tickets from uh, from Shelley Huber, and uh, I have more information about that. And um, everybody should know when they're struck in the middle of the night with nothing to read, they can always go to the little library at the South Newfane Baptist Church, which is open 24 seven. There are books that are free. Um, and you can also leave books there, I believe. Is that correct? You can leave books, take a book. So when you just have that urge to read something that's not in your home library and that is not online, please go to the, the little library. Um, there are a few thank yous. One is to the uh, village, the incorporated village of Newfane for making this lovely hall available to us and also to the Newfane road crew for setting up. Thank you very much. And now we will um, continue uh, with an introduction of our select board, and then we'll go on to Article 2. So go ahead. Okay. Here, you, you need to, um, Just like to introduce everyone on the select board. From left, my left to right is Chris Williams, Gary Delius, Shelley Huber, Mike Fitzpatrick, and town clerk, of course, is Carol Hasselbeck, and I don't know where Shannon Meckel is, but she's the uh, administrative assistant with whom we could not do anything without her, and I'm Marion Dowling. Thank you. Article two. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize the treasurer to collect current taxes pursuant 32 VSA section 4791? Is there a motion? Lynn Forrest moves it. Myler Fassler seconds it. Uh, so the article is, shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize the treasurer to collect current taxes pursuant 32 VSA, section 4791. The motion is now on the floor. Lynn Forrest, do you want to speak? No. Is there anyone who wants to speak to this? Oh, she's changed her mind. I just want to say that Melissa Brown is doing a fabulous, excellent job as treasurer. If there's no further discussion, are you ready for the vote? Yes. All right. Uh, an I vote means you are in favor of authorizing the treasurer to collect current taxes. So, um, shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize the treasurer to collect current taxes pursuant to the Vermont laws as stated? All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Article three. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane pay taxes for the ensuing year on a quarterly basis due on the 15th of August, October, January, and April? The late charge for interest being at the maximum legal rate of 1% per month for the current fiscal year and 1.5% per month for each year thereafter until paid. Is there a motion? Myra Fassler has moved it and Evelyn Sirwa has uh, seconded it, so um, I need to read it again. It's part of Robert's rules. 
shall the voters of the town of Newfane pay taxes for the ensuing year on a quarterly basis due the 15th of August, October, January, and April, the late charge for interest being at the maximum legal rate of 1% per month for the current fiscal year and 1.5% per month for each year thereafter until paid. So uh, is there any discussion? Myra, you made the motion. Do you want to say anything? No, do you want to say anything? No. No, all right. Is there anyone who wants to say anything? Apparently not. Are you ready for the vote? I think so. All right. Uh, those in favor are, just a minute. Okay, I'm supposed to explain it. You're all smart enough. Okay, those in favor of Article 3 as read, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 3 passes. Article 4. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize the select board to sell or otherwise convey property acquired through tax sale proceedings? Is there a motion? All right. Lisa Harris has moved that. Is there a second? second. Meg Spicer has seconded it. So we are now discussing Article 4. Shall the town of Newfane authorize the select board to sell or otherwise convey property acquired through tax sale proceedings? Is there any discussion? Lisa? Any, any discussion? Apparently not. OK, so we're going to vote. An I vote means you're in favor of Article 4. A no vote means you oppose it. Um, all those in favor of Article 4 as read, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Article 4 passes. Before I read Article 5, I would like to make note of a correction that's been, um, I've been made aware of. Um, on page 16, there is a typographical error. If you go to the right-hand column, the fourth and fifth lines from the bottom, the fifth line from the bottom, the Williamsville Hall capital improvement should read $15,000. There should be a five where the first zero on the left is. And the next line should read 640,499. This is the number that has been calculated everywhere else that this number was manipulated. So it is correct both in this article and on page 19. It was um, a one-digit typo. All right, so now that everybody's made that correction to their their town report, I will read Article 5. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane vote to authorize capital fund expenditures in the amount of $640,499 as proposed in the capital needs plan for fiscal year 2019? Thank you. Gary Delius has moved it. Is there a second? Tom Bedell has seconded it. Gary Delius, would you like to speak to this? For the comfort of the, of the dais. Uh, I'd like for you to turn to page 19. On page 18 and 19, you will see the details of what is intended to be purchased under the Capital Improvements Program. That number sums up to $640,499. Now, this is the appropriation to expend the money. You're going to see a couple more numbers in the next two articles, which tell you where the money's going to come from to pay for this article. So it can be a little confusing, so we want to start off, start off by saying the first number you're going to see is for the total appropriation for capital equipment. Then we're going to talk about where the money is going to come from to pay for it. Is there any other discussion? Are you ready to vote? All right. We are voting on 
Article 5, which is authorizing capital fund expenditures in the amount of $640,499 as proposed in the capital needs plan for fiscal year 2019. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the article passed. Uh, Article 6, shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize the select board to raise the amount of $188,261 for fiscal year 2019 capital needs? Is there a motion? So moved. Gary Delius moves. Is there a second? And that stars Knetchel has seconded it. Gary, do you want to speak? So back to our math problem of solving for three unknowns. This article tells you where the first set of the number that's going to pay for the equipment that we've just talked about as the capital expense is going to come from. And that will come from taxes raised. That, that amount will be $188,261. We're going to come back then after we pass this article. Uh, and then move into how some other financing will be used to pay for this total article in itself. But this is the first part of paying for the $640,499 that we just talked about and passed. Is there any further discussion? Yes, please. Carolyn Chuck from Newfane. Um, I just wondered why the article doesn't say that you're going to raise taxes. Why isn't that stated since it does say that on, the, on page um, 19, that that's how the money is to be raised? Why doesn't the article say that? Why doesn't the article say that the um, money is going to pay taxes, raise taxes? Why, why aren't we allowing them, supposedly we're voting to authorize the select board to raise the amount of. Why doesn't it say that we're voting for them to raise the amount of in taxes? Because that's what it says on page 19. Uh, do, do you understand the question? Do you want to answer it? OK, here. The, uh, if, if you read the article, it's in sort of like town report language. Um, for the voters, this authorizes the voters of town of Newfane to authorize the select board to raise the amount of 188,261,000. ,000. That particular amount is, comes from taxes. Um, maybe in future years we should, we, this is standard language that we pick up from year to year because this article appears every year. So maybe next year a good idea would be to put in that it is specifically coming from taxes raised. All right, does that answer your question? All right, is there any other discussion? Questions? Comments? It seems like you're ready to vote on Article 6. So, an article, a vote, a yes vote is in favor of raising $188,261 for the fiscal year of 2019 capital needs. All those in favor of Article 6 as read, please indicate so by saying aye. And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the article passes. Moving right along. Article 7. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize the select board to borrow up to $152,000 for fiscal year 2019 capital needs? Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, so Meg Spicer moved it. Gary, I guess you're going to second it. Um, do you want to speak to it? No. Gary, do you want to speak to it? Sure. So. Back to the book with all the numbers. Again on page 19. You'll see the item there which says in the second column, about three, two-thirds of the way down the page, 152,000 
and that shows that it's coming from borrowing. So this is the amount of money that normally, in years past, we borrowed most of the amount that we were going to pay for capital equipment from somebody else and then paid them back over time. We're trying to get those numbers down now so where that we don't have to borrow so much. So this is the amount that would have to be borrowed under this year's capital improvement plan. We hope to bring you, as a change in fiscal management, a, articles in future years where the, the borrowing number is not there at all. But for this year, we still have to borrow $152,000 to pay for the capital improvement plan. Is there any further discussion? Who, the question is, who do we borrow it from? <laughs> That's where the magic of the people who deal with the numbers comes from, the accounting office, uh, the um, uh, assistant town manager. All those things are taken care of by the professional staff. They go out and they do the research, they find the best numbers, and then they come back to us. There are pro professional organizations, municipal lenders, who bond these particular projects on behalf of municipalities. They're cheaper than if you went up to People's Bank and just said, can I have a loan? Okay. Any other questions? I guess you're ready to vote on Article 7. Shall the voters of the Town of Newfane authorize the Select Board to borrow up to $152,000 for fiscal year 2019 capital needs? All those in favor of Article 7 as read, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Article 7 passes. Article 8. Shall the voters of the Town of Newfane vote to raise the amount of $100,000 to be added to the Capital Reserve Fund to be solely dedicated for future capital needs? Is there a motion? I need a motion before you can talk. I, okay, thank you, Meg. Meg Spicer has moved it. Is there a second? Lynn Forrest has seconded it. Thank you. Meg, do you want to speak to it? No. Lynn, do you want to speak to it? I know that Shelley Huber does. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is replenish, uh, we're trying to replenish the um, uh, fund. As we take money out, we would like to be able to put the money back in so that we have a capital fund going forward so we don't have to continue to borrow um, in crises. And, um, it's a replenishing the fund um, amount. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Are there any questions? Are you ready to vote? All right. You're voting on Article 8. And um, a yes vote means you are in favor of adding the $100,000 to the Capital Reserve Fund. Shall the voters of the Town of Newfane vote to raise the amount of $100,000 to be added to the Capital Reserve Fund to be solely dedicated for future capital needs? All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. aye. And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the article passes. Article 9. Shall the voters of the Town of Newfane authorize Town and Highway operational expenditures in the amount of $1,388,035? Is there a motion? Uh, James, and your last name? Russell has moved it, and I'll take Gary Delius as a second. James, do you want to speak to it? He didn't come up to the microphone, but he said he thinks that the road crew is a godsend to the community. Do you hear that, Jay Wilson? <laughs> is there any other discussion on the budget? Yes, okay, Gary, go ahead. So I think you know now that we're getting down to 
the long list of numbers beginning on page 10 and ending on page 16. In the lower right-hand corner, you'll find $1,388,095. That's the number we're going to vote on, and it's the sum of all the numbers on the previous six pages. That's all the nickels, dimes, the pen pencils, paper, trucks, everything else that we have to buy, except for capital improvement, which is on the following page. That's everything that it takes us to run town government, including those items which we donate to various organizations who provide services for our citizens. Is there any other discussion? Bob Litchfield? Yeah, I'm sure I'm most sorry. of you. Some I'm Marcus sure most of you Go ahead. know me. I'm Bob Litchfield. I live here in New Pain. I'd like to amend that article to add $20,000 to that budget for the simple reason, as most of you probably know, Williamsville has closed their doors. They're no longer a fire department. So Newbrook has to cover that area, New Pain. Uh, Waynesville and South Newfane. So I'd like to... Yeah, can you speak into the mic more? Okay, here I am. Um, yeah, I'd like to amend that motion to include $20,000 because Williamsville has closed their doors. They're no longer functionable. It's disbanding through lawyers. So we, have, we cover that area. And uh, on page 12, I believe it is, it says fire companies. You'll see that they admitted that for the 2000, uh, 2019, they just made a zero. Well, we'd like to increase that to the 20,000 for us to, us to be able to use that to cover Williamsville and South Newfane. Thank you. Thank you. So now there is an amendment on the floor. Um, I need a second for the amendment. And you are, sir? Rick. Wickers is, has seconded it. Um, and so now there can be discussion on the amendment, which we will have to vote on. Uh, the amendment changes Article 6, Article 9, to read that the amount will be 1,300,000, no, it's going to be 408,035 dollars. Is my math correct? Okay, it will make it that that's what it would do. Um, so that and that's how the article that's how the amendment, Bob, if that's all right with you, the amendment needs to read that um, that the amount will be one million four hundred and eight thousand and thirty five dollars. So that's the amendment uh, four hundred and eighty eight. Thank we're going to just take a moment and do a little long addition or get one of the sixth graders out there to help us. Um, eight. Yeah, I was right the first time. It's a hundred and it's a, mil a million four hundred and eight thousand three um, and thirty five dollars. All right. Okay. So that is what our, um, that's what we're discussing now, whether we want to change Article 9 to amend it so that the amount is $1,408,035. Is there discussion about this? Yes. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, ask Pat Halloran, ask your question, and I'll repeat it. So, so everybody heard the question, does the $20,000 open the building or just cover the territory from Newbrook? As far as but, I know, I think we just cover the territory. The just, lawyers are happy, not having this burden. Okay. So I have a question. How much of the $20,000 goes to the lawyers? <laughs> <laughs> All right. No answer. All right. One, two. So, so go ahead. Yeah. 
Carolyn Chuck from Newfane. Do we have to say that the twenty thousand dollars stays in the Williamsville area, or do we say that it goes to the Newbrook area to cover Williamsville? I think that was the answer we just got. Is that it? It goes to the Newbrook Fire Department so that they can get to Williamsville and South Newfane. Okay. So the, does the article have to reflect that or no? Um, no, no it doesn't. We're just talking about money. Uh, Doris Knetchel was recognized next. You guys are doing a really good job about using the microphones, which I know nobody really likes to do, but we're getting a, we're getting a thumbs up from BCTV. Uh, my understanding is that um, East Dover is going to be covering a portion of that, and they wouldn't be getting any of the money. All right. So there is some coverage. The understanding is there's some right. coverage because from South Newfane coming from East Dover. Right. Because, because of the mileage uh, requirements for fighting fires, East Dover is closer to Williamsville for mm -hmm. fighting fires than Newbrook is. And my understanding is that East Dover is going to be covering that. So the 20th. Well, maybe we'll know more when the lawyers are done. Well, I'm, t you know, I'm thinking my question is why are we giving 20000 to Newbrook when somebody else is going to be doing the job? Good question. Anybody here want to answer that question? Okay. I'm Jay Wilson from the Newbrook Fire Department. Um, so Newbrook will be the primary response for the entire town. Um, we're in discussions now to give part of that 20,000 to Eastover for their assistance, but we will still be the fire department that has to cover the whole town. Um, it's no more money than what you've paid in previous years. You always gave Williamsville 20 and us 20. It costs something like $100,000 to run our department now, so the rest of that money has to be raised through fundraisers. So the 20000 is helpful to the extra costs that it incurs to, to cover that part of town. Um, and East Dover has been very happy to come and sit, assist us. And, and uh, the, we've managed to get the five-mile radius covered between the two stations so that people's taxes should change with Williamsville closing. So, Thank you, Jay. Why did it close? I don't have a good answer for that. All right, sir. I'm sorry. The, I, um, I'm sorry. This this man. This excuse me. This man had his hand, hand raised first. <laughs> I'll get to you next. Uh, my name is Richard Stuthain. Um I, I don't think twenty thousand is enough. Um, I want to thank the fire department for being so frugal, but that's a huge re responsibility, and I know that they're. They're working really hard to raise money, and I just wanted to ask if that was enough money to cover more work for all of an extremely hard working group. Is there anyone who wants to answer that question? Is $20,000 enough to cover the work? Well, we're just trying to keep the level funded in and never spend the past. We do raise all our money. If anyone is interested, <laughs> we always need to work. You don't have to be a fireman. We have fundraisers and everything else. We're glad to have you show up. So um, the answer is that this is level funding, and that um, if any, and the fire department does a lot of fundraising, and. If anyone wanted to be a volunteer fundraiser, they would be welcome to do it. I've got this gentleman and then Mike. Go ahead. Tom Abbott's Eddie Road and Fame. Uh, the question is okay. uh, between South and Williamsville, uh, you have to cover the bridge. Are the fire apparatus able to cross that bridge? Yes. I think twice. You are. Okay. The, an the answer is that the fire apparatus can go th over the Williamsville covered bridge. Mike. I mean, I agree with Rick that the fire apparatus should be allowed. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, speak up. Well, I think they can hear me, but I do agree with Rick. I think it should be done. This is why I do this as a man on the board. Mike, make sure. Oh, they can't hear you. They can't get you. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like the other 
I said, I agree with Rick that the, the fire department should get more money. And I said, we pay the rescue almost 50000 a year. And every time there's a call, these guys are on the call long before a rescue even shows up. <laughs> and I believe they do a great job. I mean, there should be a lot more money. If we could, I'd like to throw them more money. Um, you know, but they don't ask for it. They have to raise all this money by chicken barbecues and everything else. There's a lot of expense. By taking over Williamsville, they got more people come on. It cost them more money for training and everything else. Um, yeah, I'd love to see them. If we could raise that up, let's raise it up some more for them. As a point of information, it is possible to amend an amendment. Uh, I want to hear from people we haven't heard from. Joan Weir, can you please come up and use the mic? Uh, good morning. I'm Joan Weir from Williamsville, and my question is um, to the select board. Um, why? Why did the select board, in developing the budget, not put the 10000 in for Williamsville South well, Newfoundland? The 20000 20000 So just a minute. Excuse me. Who, who Excuse me, like 20000 answer that? I mean, it, Mike I, I, sounded I, like he was in support. Was it a... I wasn't at the meeting the night. I guess okay. I went through. I wrote up and I said that uh, I think it was an oversight. So I mean, I would never cut it down if we give Williamsville the 20 last year. I told him to do it. Okay. I believe, Madam Moderator, through you to the previous speaker. Thank you. When we were building the budget, we didn't have the information on what was going to happen to Williamsville Department. Right. So we really couldn't deal with the number because the information was not there yet. So the only way to get it into the budget in time for town meeting is to do it as a floor amendment. So for... Right, let me repeat this for the television, that um, it's a budgeting process is that there um, a certain amount of known and unknown facts so that's why it did the twenty thousand dollars that had previously gone to Williamsville did not get into the budget for Brookline I remind you now that we are um, discussing what we're talking about is the amendment to add twenty thousand dollars to change uh, article 9 by raising an additional twenty thousand dollars for the Newbrook fire department um, so, sir, you, this is your second time to speak to this. It is my second time. Uh, Rickards, uh, I guess the point of information I didn't mention was the fact that um, well, I did some interviewing down there and talked to some of the guys that work there. And I happen to know that uh, they're spending money out of their own pocket to cover some of their training and, and, and stuff like that. So I really feel strongly that uh, they deserve as much support as we can give them, and that they're being very modest in what they're asking. Uh, I, I would like a little clarification. When you say they, are you referring to the Williamsville South Newfane firefighters, or the Newbrook firefighters, or all firefighters? I'm talking about the people down at Newbrook. In Newbrook, all right. Thank you. Yes, Dan DeWalt. Um, I move that we amend the motion to change the 20 to 30. There is a motion to amend the amendment from $20,000 to $30,000. Is there a second? Second, second? And who seconded? I heard somebody over here. Ann Landenberger. Ann Landenberger, thank you. Uh, so now we are talking about adding $30,000, uh, changing amendment number one. Uh, no, because we have to vote on each amendment sequentially backwards. Uh, so right now, we're really only talking about changing Amendment 1 from 20 to 30. Is there discussion about the $30,000 amendment? That's what we're talking about now. Uh, and who would like to speak? Yes. Um, I'm going to ask you to come forward so that the television can capture what you have to say. And for the record, please restate your name. Carol Hatcher. I remember a wicked fire off of Grimes Hill Road fairly recently. I think it was last year. And um, there was, it was t the building was almost totally damaged. 
And I remember, now that's Grimes Hill, which is really right up next to Williamsville. And I remember the Newbrook Fire Department and the firefighters, they made it there really fast. And they worked extremely hard. We did have one truck from Williamsville, I believe, but Newbrook put all the muscle in that one. And I think that Newbrook is really, does an excellent job and we should reward them. Yes, uh, Priscilla. Uh, Priscilla Cotton from Newfane. Um, I'm definitely all for this idea, uh, 20,000 or 30,000. Um, after being, the, I've been on the select board before, I'm just wondering what happens where, when we vote on an amount of money like $30,000, how, how does this money come about? If we... It, this, this comes, this is, we're raising this at taxes. This is, um, th this is money from, this is raised through taxes and uh, the electorate has the right to direct where this money goes. They can tell the select board that this is money earmarked for the Newbrook Fire Department. Thanks. If it were a school budget, we couldn't do that. All right. Um, before you have your second time, is there anyone who hasn't spoken first to, th to $30,000? Yes. And you guys are doing a great job with the microphone, really. Hi, I'm Lindsay Bertram. I'm just curious what the response time differences would be from everything being at Newbrook, which obviously it is right now, as Williamsville is closed, versus if Williamsville department doors were open, would there be a significant response time increase to say Adams Hill, somewhere out in South Newfane? So Bob, you wanna take the mic and answer the question and then make the statement you wanted to make? Yeah, that was part of the problem. They just didn't have personnel enough and we, a lot of times we'd get there before they did. Uh, but we have, I just wanna let you know, there's been several firefighters from Williamsville have come over and joined us. So that's the way it is. If yeah. the trucks are all in Newbrook, they still have to come from Newbrook instead of from Williamsville. What's that now? If the trucks are located in Newbrook, at yeah. Newbrook yeah. versus the trucks located in Williamsville. Yeah. Wait, how? Yeah. So there's obviously some lag in response time. It's got to be some. Well, some. Okay. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to stop this conversation. Yeah. Um, are, are there, is there any other? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Stand up and take a mic. Evelyn Saroy, Thank Williamsville. You. Is there any chance that the assets of the Williamsville Fire Department will be absorbed by Newbrook to offset that expense? That's a question, is, is, yeah, for Bob? Well, that's what I was saying. The lawyers, they're planning on it now, so I don't know how long it's going to take. What, what they're going to do with it, I have no idea. It might go back to the town. I, oh. I don't know. Why wouldn't it be the towns? Uh, it's been a private, it's been a private, um, yeah. So they're like a 501c something? They're a, I see, okay, thank you. These are private, uh, volunteer, in every sense of the world, um, fire departments. So a woman in back, yeah. I'm Brenda Siegel, Newfane. Um, does anyone know roughly what the tax consequence is? I want to just make a caveat that I'm also very much for this, whether it's 20000 or 30000 but also really for having all the information. So does anybody know what the tax consequence would be? Doris, you're usually pretty good about that. Can you help us out? The tax consequences on $20,000 versus $30,000. So every penny on the tax rate raises $25,000. $25, so you're looking at a penny more or less. Whether it's $20,000, it's less. And if it's $30,000, it's more. We are talking about $30,000 right now. Is that correct? 
Did I interpret that correctly? Okay. Uh, so we are talking about $30,000 right now. Mr. Pelsu. I just asked for clarification on this additional $30,000 that that is to be added to Newbrook's current $20,000. So in the budget, it would show Newbrook at 50000 and not the 30000 be reinstated into Williamsville uh, South Newfane uh, spot on the budget. Thank you for that clarification. Although it looks like some people are more puzzled. <laughs> so we could just go to um, that line item. You want to tell me where we are? At the bottom line, yes. uh, right, that the top line of Newbrook Fire and Rescue with the current amendment, the current amendment for adding $30,000 to this article, whose number I've forgotten, is, uh, would read $50,000 and it would change the bottom line accordingly, all right? This is the, the, the amendment we're talking about is changing Article 9 by adding $30,000. That's the, the, the bottom line. Uh, you want to tell that to me once again, 118? $1,418,035. That would be up from $1,388,035. Uh, Right, which would be up from $1,388,035,000. But we are talking now, let's just keep this straight, we are on uh, Article 9, Amendment 2. So, Amendment 2, is there anyone who has not spoken about amending the amendment to $30,000? Anyone who's not, you have not spoken to about this amendment to the amendment, Dan, so let's hear from you. Um, I think this gives us a chance, you know, we always talk about community values and we talk about the things we care about. And then when we come about nickels and pennies, we all get greedy and stingy. And I think this gives us an opportunity to say that we actually value our community. We value the volunteer work that we get from people who put out a lot of really hard work for us. And we should be able to pony up another penny on our tax rate to show that gratitude. And I think rather than more than just the fact that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a a piece of money. It's also a vote of confidence that there is something in this world that matters more than the bottom line with the dollar sign from it, and that is what we do for each other. I wish we had that on um, the microphone. Okay. I was afraid to say that. So, um, and I'm going to close the balcony next time. <laughs> so, Dan would like... Uh, so he is speaking in support of the amendment to the amendment in favor of $30,000 as a sign of community support and value for what the fire, the Newbrook Fire Department does. Is that a... And also, at the same time, to say that money is not the most important thing on the frigging planet. <laughs> and that money is not the most important thing on the frigging planet. And <laughs> that's a direct quote. Yes, Myra Fassler. There is a motion to move the question. Is there a second? Tom Bedell seconds it. So the question has been moved and seconded. You are now voting on the Amendment 2 of the article, of Article 9. So an I vote is in favor of changing the figure in, our, in Amendment 1 to $30,000. Does everybody understand? And if you're opposed, say no. Uh, all those in favor of amending the amendment from $20,000 to $30,000, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying no. No. All right, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. We now have an amendment, 
right? Um, our, the amendment has been changed to $30,000. We still have to vote on that. Yeah, so you're gonna vote again. You're going to vote again on the, um, our amendment one, which is now $30,000, adding $30,000 to the amendment, and you're not done yet. We're gonna vote, we're gonna vote yet again, okay? So plenty of time to um, decide. So we're now voting on changing the $20,000, no, changing Article 9 from, mm -hmm, let me find my page, I've lost it, from um, $1,388,000. Right, and $35. dollars $1,418,035. Thank you, Gary. So the, the, this amendment would change Article 9 to $1,418,035. All those in favor of this amendment of $30,000, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And now we will vote on Article 9 as amended. All right. Yes. You have a question? Tristan Johnson, New Fane. I just, in, in light of what Dan said, what all of you have just said, and after having read the short column in the town report from the fire department, I would strongly encourage a far more detailed report telling us all exactly what your needs are, exactly what your financing problems are, so more clearly you can respond to this kind of situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on, um, on the amended Article 9? This is the vote. This is the vote that will determine how much money we will raise for the town and highway expenditures. So I'm going to read it as amended. Article 9 now reads, shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize town and highway operational expenditures in the amount of $1,418,035. Everybody understands what an I vote is? Okay. All those in favor of Article 9 as amended, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 9, as amended, passes. Thank you for, for following that through. Article 10, shall the voters of the town of Newfane change the term for town treasure from one year to three years pursuant to 17 VSA subset 2646-2? Is there a, moosh, a motion? Carol Hasselbeck has moved it. Is there a second? Uh, Mike Fitz, Fitzpatrick has seconded. Is there discussion? Carol, do you want to speak to this? Yeah. You want to come take the mic? Sure. So we voted and I got, I got elected to speak. So everything I'm saying on this article applies to the next two as well so that we don't have to repeat ourselves. Um, we found in the last year that the positions are getting really, really complicated with all the technology. We're spending a lot of time and effort at learning all the technology to handle all the town business appropriately. And we felt that electing the treasurer, the town clerk, and the delinquent tax collector for three years rather than one would make a lot of sense for the town. All of the money that you're putting into educating us on everything we have to do would go cover three years rather than one year. And if we got voted out the next year, you'd have to um, train somebody new to handle the position because they are getting really, really complicated. Um, what else did I say? There, I did some research. There are at least 13 towns in the local area that have these positions as three-year positions. 
So we would not be the only town in Wyndham County with three-year positions. And, the, and uh, I think that covers our, uh, why we think it would help the town. Is there any discussion? Article 10? Yeah, Tristan and then Jake. Thank you again. Tristan Johnson, Newfane. Uh, lean down a little bit closer. Yeah. Better? That's better. Tristan Johnson, Newfane. I've raised this point in previous town meetings. Uh, we all, through our taxes, fund employees of the town. But in no way do we ever know whether they've met performance objectives they've exceeded, failed to, or um, are simply met. And I realize that this in an area is confidential, um, but I think there ought to be a way where we can learn that the people we're paying through our taxes have really met the objective of the position. I'm fully in favor of the change to three years, but I would really like to see each of the three positions state what their performance, their uh, objective is per year so that we understand that they're meeting what we are paying them to accomplish. So I'd ask that the select board and these three formulate that so that we can see what are they going to do, how can we feel satisfied that they've accomplished what we're paying them to do, so that we can be reassured that all is going well in town hall. Thank you very much. Jake Urato, South Newfane. I had a thought that instead of a three-year term, uh, possibly amending it to start anyway with a two-year term. We've had situations in the past where maybe the person wasn't totally ideal for the position, and I think three years is a long time to have to wait to make a change. And I also agree that I, I don't know how they could evaluate uh, their progress and their accomplishments, but that would certainly help us. But if we went from one year to two years, I do understand there's a lot of training and that makes a lot of sense. But maybe not a three-year term, at least to start with. So, uh, Jake, don't go away yet. Uh, is that a hypothetical amendment or is that an actual amendment you'd like to make? Uh, actual? Actual. All right. So you are proposing to amend Article 10. I'm, I just learned it's not allowed in state law. <laughs> Which? Uh, for two years. We, we, it's one or three. I'm, I'm, I just found we can't change state law. Um, and I've just been informed what state law is. Um, so I'm sorry that you can't make your actual amendment. Um, we are, yeah, please come up. Oh, you can come right here. All right. So next year, next year when we're back in Williamsville Hall, everybody please take a, a seat closest to your favorite mic. Um, Brenda Siegel, Newfane. Um, my only concern would be that Putney just had a really difficult situation with their town clerk, I believe it was the town clerk, and um, it made it very complex for the voters trying to figure out how to get a new town clerk in. And then also, I am really concerned that three years is a really long time. So I think some of us are experiencing that with the presidency right now. So I think that, <laughs> I think uh, that it, I'm, I'm a little, I'm disappointed that our law says it can't be two, and I'm not sure what the right thing to do in that situation is because I understand the training issue. Two would make sense to me, three doesn't as much. Yes. It is our understanding that state law is changing to allow for these positions to be appointed without a change in the charter. So if at a point in the future we found that the individuals were not meeting the requirements of you, the voter, because they don't meet the requirements of those, they, they, they're doing a terrific job. But we, as a select board, we don't manage 
the elected the other elected offices you manage those at the voter booth if we found that in the future you were not satisfied with people who were performing these tasks those positions could be moved to appointed positions so if at three years out you decide that uh, we need a change there is now the ability to go to a hired or appointed position as opposed to continuing with a voted position without having to change the charter just as a point of information Sir, could you please come up and use the mic? Thank you. I just want to reinforce the idea that I think um, the voting is very important and we're the ones in charge of what job people are doing and it's our job to find out how people are doing. I think uh, we can't lay it on other people and say, well, you give us a report. I, uh, we've got to figure it out, ask around, and do our work as citizens. And uh, I think voting once a year is a great thing. And uh, why not vote more often instead of three years? That's how we keep things accountable. Uh, sir, for the record, please say, state your name into the mic. Uh, my name is Rick Ritz from New Fane. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, Dan. Um, I'd like to speak against this amendment. I think our current... It's not, excuse me, it's not an amendment, it's an article. I'm sorry, this, this article, uh, Dan Wolf. Uh, I think our current, the three people in this position are doing a really great job. I think that when we have annual elections, I, I don't remember a time in as long as I've lived in Newfane that we voted somebody out of office when they were doing a good job. So even though I understand that training, there's requirements of training, I think that we usually, when someone's doing their job well, we give them that vote of confidence and so they, we don't lose that training by having to hire someone new. And in the past, we have had times where the things got a little squirrely in the town clerk's office in various places, and it's problematic. And then in, in, in Putney, right now, even though we could change to, to have the select board appoint the town clerk, we had that discussion a couple of years ago. As a town, we thought it was not a good idea because we like the separation of powers. As long as they are separated, and the town clerk and the treasurer are independent positions, when there is a peculiar situation like in Putney where the clerk, for whatever reason, just stops showing up, that was a real limbo situation. And by having a, a, an annual vote, it decreases that possible length of time where you've got a lot of confusion and limboness. And I think that there's no real, I, don't, I, I agree with Rick, I don't see the problem with annual votes. It's not like people have to raise a bunch of money to campaign or anything. They just, you know, we do the vote without a lot of rigmarole. And I think it, it prevents, as it is right now, there are more problems that we possibly prevent than I don't see the problems that are going to be, that are there, that are posed by being a one-year term. So, Em, do you need that recap? You got it, thank you. All right, did everybody hear Dan, I think? Is there any further discussion on Article 10? You ready for the vote? I think so. Okay. Um, and I vote means that you are in favor of changing the term from one to three years for the town treasurer. Is that understood? Okay. Article 10. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane change the term for the town treasurer from one year to three years, pursuant to 17 VSA 2646-2? All those in favor of Article 10 as read, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. And Article 10 fails. Article 11. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane change the term for town clerk from one year to three years pursuant to 17 VSA 2646-2? Is there a motion? Myra Fassler has moved it. Is there a second? second. And that was Longo. First name? Ingrid. Ingrid thank you. Uh, Ingrid Longo has seconded it. Is there a uh, discussion? Uh, the, the motion, the Article 11 as read is now on the floor. Is there a discussion? Yes. Ditto. 
Bucky Pelso says ditto. <laughs> Pete. There's a call to move the question. Is there a second? Tom Bedell seconded it. So this is, you're now voting on whether to end discussion on Article 11. Is, is, um, we need a two-thirds majority to end discussion. So uh, all those in favor of ending discussion, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed by saying no. Uh, the ayes appear to have it unanimously. So we end discussion, uh, the, the more than two-thirds. There was no, nothing about that. So now you're voting on Article 11. Um, and it, a, a yes vote is in favor of changing the term of the town clerk from one to three years. Article 11, shall the voters of the town of Newfane change the term for town clerk from one year to three years pursuant to 17 VSA 2646-2? All those in favor of Article 11 as read, please indicate so by saying aye. aye. And those opposed by saying no. no. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Article 11 fails. Article 12. Shall the voter of the town of New, voters of the town of Newfane change the term for collector of delinquent taxes from one year to three years pursuant to 17 VSA 2646-2? Is there a motion? So moved, Myra Fassler. Myra Fassler is moved. It is there a second? second. And who's that? Joyce Van oh, Joyce Van Panlin. Thank you. Um, so article. 12 has been moved and seconded and is now uh, for discussion as read. Is there any discussion? Uh, there's a motion to call the question. Is there a second? No, I need one person. Okay, Meg Spicer's called, uh, seconded. So the question has been called to end discussion. We need a two-thirds majority. All those in favor of ending discussion, please indicate so by saying aye. aye. And those opposed by saying no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And there will be no further discussion of Article 12. We will now re uh, vote on Article 12. A uh, yes vote is in favor of changing the term for the collector of delinquent taxes from one to three years. All those in favor of Article 12 as read, please indicate so by saying aye. And those opposed by saying no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it and the article fails. Article 13, to transact any other business that may legally come before the town, this I would like to remind you is non-binding business and um, I think that we um, can ask you, to, are, are you ready to, to talk? Please come up to the mic. and. Uh, so Ken is the chair of the Newfane Committee on the Open and Open and Accepting Committee that we voted last year to form at this time. Thank you, Ken. Uh, yes, um, thank you, Ken Esty, uh, chair of the Open and Accepting Town mm -hmm. Committee, and I'd like to read the uh, resolution that was uh, passed last year at this time uh, by unanimous uh, voice consent. Uh, the resolution uh, reads like this. It's on page 136 of the uh, town report. The town of Newfane declares its intention to welcome and protect the rights of immigrants and refugees who are already in or who seek to come to our community and our state. To accomplish this goal, the citizens of the town of Newfane call upon the select board to consider the formation of a committee to explore ways to make our community safe for immigrants and refugees. So that occurred last year. And you'll note that the citizens did call upon the select board to consider the formation of a committee. And I'd like to publicly thank the select board for not only considering uh, to do this, but actually, in fact, doing it, and to call the committee into formation and uh, to also um, uh, have members that uh, they voted on. And so, uh, as it turned out, our committee uh, became called the Open and Accepting Town Committee. And so we took upon ourselves 
the charge to uh, not only you know, work on the terms welcome and protect, but also to consider the terms open and accept. And so uh, I'd like to report that the committee has met six times uh, over the past year. And uh, with us today, uh, Apple uh, Gifford just walked in and maybe she walked out. There she is. Uh, so she is a committee member, David Harlow, uh, Ingrid Longo, Ingrid, thank you, uh, Maud Polo, Maud is here, yes, and Rick Rickards. So uh, I would like to publicly thank all of them for their service uh, this year. A tremendous work. Uh, in brief, uh, the job is not yet done. We've had our six meetings. Uh, one highlight was having uh, Karen Richards, who is the executive, uh, let's see, well, the head of the Vermont Human Rights Commission. Uh, that was one highlight from one of our meetings. Um, each of the committee members uh, currently uh, are working on a sub-report, and then my job is to pull together the sub-reports into a final report, and then uh, what we're to do is to present that final report to the select board for um, their acceptance, that they would accept the report. And in that report, we envision right now making some recommendations to the select board. And so that's where we're situated uh, at this point in time. And so that is the uh, work. We look to have yet one more meeting, and we believe that after one more meeting, we can finally uh, bring our work to actually a close uh, of the Open and Accepting Town Committee. That is not to say that the work of what it means to do actual open and accepting work here in the town of Newfane is over. It would just mean that that committee, uh, you know, our committee has done the work and we make the recommendations. We see where we go from here. So uh, that's uh, my report. And um, I'd like to thank the town of Newfane for their support. And uh, we're very eager to uh, finish this work and to present the work to you. And I imagine that as it goes to the select board, uh, that report then would be posted on the website. So, so thank you. I'd like to take this time uh, to remind everybody we have a Doyle uh, survey here. We have the uh, West River Valley Health survey here. There's lots of other good reading material if you can't get to the little library in South Newfane. And uh, there's also lunch, which you can take home or, um, you know, I, I suppose you could eat it here in your chairs when we're done. Uh, but don't forget there's uh, takeout to go. So, uh, Jake, you wanted to speak. I don't know how many people, uh, Jake Urado, South Newfane. I don't know how many people have gone online to our town website. I don't know who is maintaining that, but uh, I think they're awesome, whoever's doing it. And we have a ton of information online now. And when I received this in the mail, I just started thinking, uh, there's a line item on page 12 that we're paying $5,000 for our annual report. And I thought there's probably a ton of people who would just assume, look at it online. And I thought maybe it's a way we could save half of that money or just print up copies for whoever would like them printed. Uh, but for a lot of people who don't come to town meeting or can just reference it online, may not need the paper copy. And it's, I thought it's just a possible way to save some money. Thank you. Um, I. On behalf of the select board, this is a good time to put in a plug for uh, going to select board meetings and um, helping them make these decisions. So uh, I think there was Geraldyn, then Lynn, and then Rick. So Geraldyn. Actually, my name is Gerald. Gerald, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Gerald Julian Cisse, South Newfane. And I'm curious to find out um, where are we with any kind of environmental climate change committee work awareness? What are we doing? Um, I know this was on the um, ballot in many towns. Articles were presented um, looking at how can we proactively 
as a community deal with you know, the scientifically um, proven climate change and what are we doing about it. So do we have any kind of committee um, already established? Anybody? Um, yeah, do you have an answer? Um, I know that um, Vermont 350 is looking for folks in Newfane to spearhead um, ballot initiatives um, for going fossil free um, at a town level. Um, and I didn't do it and I'm forever guilty. So um, Vermont 350, there's a coordinator in uh, Brattleboro um, named, oh God, Daniel Quip. He's adorable. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. So even if you don't feel strongly about the environment, maybe that would be an incentive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just a minute, I had there, Lynn, and then Rick, and then um, Brenda. Right, okay. Hi, Lynn Forrest, I'm the chair of your planning commission in Newfane. First, I'd like to recognize the committee members, Angela Sanborn and Ken Esty, and um, Can you Bob get closer McCandless, to the mic? who isn't here right now. Excuse Can me? Can you get closer to the mic? Oh, and Bob McCandless, who's um, on sabbatical. Um, uh, Mike Young has been um, off the committee. He's been on it, but not working for the last year. And for the last month, Marsha Highland has been helping us out, even though she's not appointed yet. Um, so I wanted to say thank you to them. Um, you have, I think there are a bunch of these around. We left them on the seat so you can take them home. If uh, you remember in the fall, we had a, a survey that was put out. It was advertised in the paper. It was handed out at the community forum. It was on the website and I don't know, and the post office and the town office. We had over 150 replies. And what you have in front of you are summaries of the responses. Um, on SurveyMonkey, you have an option to do things like have your response in what they call cloud format. And you look at this and you go, what the heck is this? These, the bigger the word, the more often it was said. Um, and you'll see on one of them, I can't remember which one, on um, transportation, traffic problems, do not be concerned that one of the issues are old people. I, the, the purpose of when I read the detailed responses, copies of which are up here, um, people were saying old people need a way to get to where they're going to go. Older people need a crosswalk going across from the bank to the market. Those kinds of issues were on there. We did find a real disconnect in a lot of ways where people say, we want more business. We want jobs. We want affordable housing. Don't change the town. Exact same people on different, this, on your page one to page two to page four. We will be looking to your help then taking the survey we have and modulating it, morphing it, so then we can say, all right, so what do you think we should do, guys? You know, how do you think we should solve these problems? How do we want to address these problems? What kind of groups can we get together to actually work on these issues and present solutions, possible solutions, to our select board? Who, by the way, have been very supportive to our work. So that is where we are. We're going to be putting the full survey and all the minutia 24 pages of individual responses on the website. If you want uh, to pick up a copy of that today, we have 10 copies. I didn't think people were gonna wanna take all that paper home. So um, that's where we are. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesdays at six o'clock at the town office. In the summer, we usually bump it up to seven o'clock to uh, take care of parents that have uh, child responsibilities during the day. So that's one. Number two, I've been asked to 
uh, let you know that New Fain and New is having an open house potluck on Monday, April 23rd at 6 o'clock. So we have many people in New Fain and New who are on our member list who don't really come to meetings. And there's a bunch of people who say, what do you guys do? We don't know anything about you. So 6 o'clock, Monday, the 23rd, right here. And I tell you, the, the, the food's going to be yummy. So that's that. And then the very last, and then I'll get out of your way, is on March 28th in South Newfane at my house, which used to be called the Three Penny Lodge, when Joe and Phyllis Mandel had it as a ski lodge back in the 60s. Um, or the house with the heart-shaped pond, if you know that one. We are going to have a spring salamander crossing training at 6... 630 so everybody who wants to learn how to be a salamander crossing guard come we'll have coffee tea cider and I don't know what else am I allowed to answer a question or do you need to uh, no you can answer questions um, they used to do it on Depot Road on foggy nights in the middle of the and there were no lights and you have to slam on your brakes and avoid these people standing in the fog. Mm -hmm. That's very scary <laughs> for drivers. Can we please make sure that people are wearing very well lit costumes if they're doing that? I'm sure that we can get you a very bright costume. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, what we did in front of our house, I went out to WW and I got a very super bright light to, so people knew which way they were coming. They could see that there was something going on and would slow down. And then we have signs. I think in the last few years, the signs have deteriorated and we don't have the full, I have one orange vest right now. So I'm hoping the person who spearheads this at the Bonnie Vale um, Center will bring us some materials or tell us how we can get them. But thank you. I know that it is dangerous and it is scary. All right. Uh, I might be interested to see if you can make a connection to uh, school. Thank you. Uh, I will uh, ask her to do that. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. And <laughs> And I'm sure that the new and new potlucks on April 23rd will include a celebration of Shakespeare's birthday. <laughs> yeah. All right. There you go. Sure. Right. Maybe I'll stay. Uh, I just want to stand. Um, just recently, when I was reminding people about the town meeting. Uh, coming up here and unfortunately it was printed um, erroneously in the paper that the meeting was going to be at the Williamsville Hall and fortunately a lot of you came here anyway uh, we um, uh, Louise from the library was very kind to put up notice and uh, Shannon let people know through the internet again that the meeting would be here. But one of the, some of the things that people uh, mentioned to me when I was talking about select board meetings in general um, was first of all, some people are still not aware of the fact that each of our meetings is open to the public. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, any select board issue or any issue that comes up in the town, if you have questions or thoughts or ideas, um, they need to be brought to us as a unit of five people as in the select board. We, on our own, cannot um, make decisions. We can't tell you things, something can be passed or not passed. It must be done in front of the uh, select board in general. And that's how we uh, function. It's called open meeting laws, which we take very seriously. Um, I do have to say that the town hall was recently painted on the outside. I'm sure all of you have seen that and noticed how beautiful it looks now. And the inside also has been painted. So it's a very cheerful place to come to. 
and the atmosphere there, not only physically, but um, intellectually and emotionally, at least from my point of view, has been very lovely. People work together very well. There's a good sense of humor. There's always coffee and tea available and snacks if you want to come in and just um, talk to people. There's, you don't have to come for any official reason other than just to come and join us for a while. If during the week time between our meetings um, you have something that you want to talk about at a next meeting, um, you can call Shannon at any time. She is the Select Board of Administrative Assistant, and the phone number is 365-7772, and Shannon's extension is extension 4. And she's always there to help anybody with any issue. Um, and it will get done faster if you call her directly. And if you want to come as a scheduled member of a meeting, she can put you on the agenda. If you just want to come the last minute and just stop in as an unscheduled member of the public, please do so. And during that time, if you feel like talking at all, you will be recognized. But it is a great place to come to. We have a great board, and it's fun. We do laugh a lot, too. Anyway, so thank you for coming today. And please remember that um, Select Board meets every first and third Monday of the month at 6 p.m. at Town Hall. Thank you very much. Just so everyone knows who Shannon is, because she's a very important part of our organization. Would you mind standing up, Shannon? She's, she's taking a few minutes off, and we owe her a great debt of gratitude, because she, she does a yeoman's job for all of us on this board and for you as citizens of the town. Is there any other business? Go ahead. I have a comment and a question, um, and I'll take my answer off the air. Um, I just want to make another plug, as I do frequently, that um, our county needs volunteer guardians ad litem more than ever, and um, which, for those of you who don't know what it is, is uh, volunteers such as myself who um, advocate for kids in the court system often because um, They've been taken by DCF or are going to be taken by DCF uh, from their families and sometimes for things like delinquency and um, a few other things. But um, it's, what? Abuse. Uh, well, yeah, that's why they're being taken. Yeah, sometimes they're abusing their parents too. <laughs> but um, it's, the number of cases just goes through the roof uh, every year um, a lot because of the opiate crisis in our community, which is very much in our community. Um, and um, the coordinator um, is also adorable, so you would feel well supported. Um, so if anyone is interested in learning about that, please, please, please come to me and um, uh, I'll buy you lunch. Um, and my question is, um, if anyone could address maybe Joan, um, I don't know if I missed the memo, but what's going on with recycling in our town? Um, I know there was that survey, and I just I haven't heard anything else. So, is there anyone, anyone who can speak that? to recycling in Newfane? <laughs> okay. Well, you put me on the spot. That's no problem. I'm uh, one member of... Uh, Just state your name for the oh, record. Oh, excuse me, Joan Weir from Williamsville. I'm one member of a three-member committee, the recycling committee that was appointed by the select board after last town meeting to look into recycling options for the community. And um, we actually didn't get created until later in the year, maybe June, June, July is when Tristam Johnson, Johanna, and my, Johanna Gardner and myself uh, met to try to tackle um, the issue really of 
how can we make recycling more efficient um, and easier to do, um, given that the recycling bins um, were removed last year. Um, that was an amazing report. Well, thank you. So we worked with the select board. We had several meetings, um, presented a report to the select board. They followed up with a survey. And if you look at the, um, on page 27 of the town report, the select board did present those results. And so essentially that's, that's the first cut from what we believe the community wants. And I believe the select board in their report to you indicates that they will continue to tackle this problem and, and delve into it further. So I, I basically, I think the work is not com you know, completed at this point. I did note that in the Planning Commission survey results, the, uh, the question, what services in the town of Newfane do you feel are in need of improvement? The recycling, um, uh, pardon me? Page four. Yeah, page four basically is the, is the largest font in, in that, is it called a cloud? Okay. So anyway, the community obviously feels there's a need of improvement for recycling services. We don't really know what that means. So if you could delve into that further and, and provide that feedback, that would be helpful. Meanwhile, um, the, um, the overall result of the recycling survey was that at least half of the people who did respond to the survey feel that the way things are being done currently um, is satisfactory. So that's, that's what we know for now. The recycling survey? <laughs> yeah, that's the recycling survey. No, it's not. They are different surveys that were done. And Shannon, could you uh, indicate how many people did fill out the recycling survey? 63 people. So it's a very, very low uh, response for the recycling survey. So that's problem number one. Great. Thank you. Uh, so, so are these questions for Joan? Yeah, please. Go ahead. Can we still... The, 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 that survey was uh, completed. Um, it's, it's done. But there could be additional survey work done. We'll let you know. Yeah. Um, if there's no objection, we'd like to hear from Jen Fry from Brookline. I, I just want to point out that it's actually 52% of people who are in favor of it. It's 48% of people that want to leave it the way it is. So the way that these questions were asked, I don't... Yeah, I, I agree with that, but the, the survey actually had several options to choose from. So for those direction for how to work with and solve the recycling problem because it's an expensive solution. Any path we take is going to be expensive. So we didn't have in the all the other choices coming forward, perhaps there are 52 percent. However, none of those actually pointed us to a specific direction that we could bring back to you with real numbers tied to it as to this is the amount of money you're going to be asked to spend when another 48 percent said we know what we want to do we want nothing done we want it to say the way it is we will continue to work this issue but right now you know the people who responded led us to believe that uh, 48 percent are fine with just the way it is. The other 52 percent, excuse me, do want something done, but it's different things. And some of the solutions would cost us well into the millions. So just a little more information about Jen. 
Uh, who else wants to speak to recycling while Joan is up here to put Joan on the spot? Uh, Lynn and then Katie. I believe the Planning Commission survey and the Recycling Survey came out around the same time, and my gut says that people did one or the other, not both. Or a lot of people were confused. They say, well, I did this survey. I don't have to answer the uh, Recycling Survey because I already did the other one. So I will... Um, pass on the detailed information. In fact, there's packets of detailed information over there, all 24 pages of each one of the responses that you see those little blue clouds. So. Uh, Katie and then Brenda. Um. Hi, I'm Katie Johnson from South Newfane. It's my understanding with speaking with the people who work at Wyndham Solid Waste Management is that you have to find a market for all of the recycled goods in order to collect for the various recycling numbers. And that might be extremely difficult for us to do in ourselves because we are such a small community with such a small amount that we're not going to generate enough recycling at any point to be worth something to someone else. If it's such a difficult thing, but it's a very true reality for recycling. Um, that's all. Brenda? Um, so one thing I wanted to... Oh, sorry, Brenda Siegel, Newfane. Um, I wanted to, as far as the 52% versus 48%, to me, even if that's what you were looking for, if, you, if the 48% that don't want to do anything, there is only one solution, to do nothing. So that is very directive. So even if it was 30%, it would have come out as more. But 52% of the town still said to the select board, we want you to do something. And so the solution is going to be a lot harder to come up with, which solution is correct. But I don't think saying 48% said do nothing well, they couldn't have said different versions of do nothing. Do nothing is do nothing. So that's, that's, that, I mean, I really think that that's a disingenuous, I mean, not that you're disingenuous about the way to say it, but a disingenuous representation of it. Um, and then just because I'm here and I want to say this, and it has to do with recycling, <laughs> um, for 350, I want to put another plug in. I was also asked to help um, uh, do a ballot measure, and I'm spending half my week in Montpelier, and I run the Southern Vermont Dance Festival, and I'm overactivated on every activist group possible, almost, and I couldn't, I couldn't do the 350 thing, and so I had said, well, if you get someone else to head it up, I would stand there with petitions, um, but they couldn't find someone to head it. So if there are people that are really excited about recycling and getting us to the 90% that, that Vermont has committed to, then I can put you in touch with Daniel Quip, and I will support you in whatever way I can um, in the actions that you're heading up. I can't head up everything is what I'm learning. So. Excuse me, excuse me, uh, excuse me. Just, just a second. I'll, I'll just say one final thing. The recycling survey um, I agree we need to delve into this further, but I just want to make it clear that leaving the way it is, 48%, is still involving recycling for our residents in the community. What it means is that people are either hiring a hauler for a fee, and that hauler is taking the recyclables away down to the district, or you can haul your own trash and do your own recycling. So that's, that's what is going on right now. So recycling is happening in the community. I think what the recycling committee would like to see more of is um, if, if we, we can include more people to, to recycle and make it more convenient. So right. thank you. Um, Just one quick pitch. When we have to operate in a vacuum, we have to go with what the numbers say. When you attend our meetings and you give us direction, 
then we can make much better decisions. And I urge you, please, if you see an issue on the website, on the agenda that you're interested in, please come to the meeting and make your voice heard. That's the way that real change takes place. We know that the current recycling situation is not exactly the way everyone wants it. But until we get better information and we know what it's going to cost us so that we can bring it back to you because the tax implications will be real, we don't have anything better we can do. And we urge you, please talk to us. We're not trying to say this is the only solution. We're never going to do anything else. We're willing to look further, but we need your input and we need better numbers in order to make those decisions. Thank you. I'd like to say that um, even if the issue that you're interested in is not on the agenda as a scheduled or unscheduled member of the public, you can come and ra railroad the uh, select board's meeting. <laughs> so, if there's no objection, Jen Fry from Brookline would like to speak again. Uh, is there any other discussion? Yeah, you can, you can say something. Yeah, um, so Shelly's going to speak. Um, I, just as a member of the Valley Lions, this year we're um, coordinating the um, kickoff uh, up in Townsend Common with a pig roast um, on Green, um, Green Up Day. And um, we're trying to coordinate um, the five towns that we serve through our organization. Um, to coordinate that and make it more of a community-wide, along with um, Hope and Action community um, group that's um, in the valley. So I just wanted to invite you to join us um, during that day. And to finish it off, it's on it's the first Saturday of May, and I think it's the fifth or sixth. I'm sorry, um, and the. Um, you know, you spend the morning picking up trash, but there's a nice pig roast um, up in on the Townsend Common um, and other side dishes. So we'd like to invite you. Um, at noon, we'll be meeting up at the Townsend Commons. Thank you. And that is May 5th. So get out early to pick up the trash and then go to Townsend. Uh, any other new business or other business to come before the uh, assembly? Here's Pete Van Loan. Pete Van Loan from South Newfane. Closer as a matter of fact, light. I live in that neck of the woods known as uh, occasionally the hamlet of Brookside and almost as often almost east over. <laughs> <coughs> With that in mind, I'd like to spend a little time between now and next town meeting looking for potential ways, possible ways of saying a little more of a thank you to the East Dover Fire Department than we have so far. Thank you. Uh, Rick, thank you. Rick? Yeah, I just want to ask, uh, there's so many meetings that we've been talking about and encouraged to go to, and uh, I wouldn't like to have gone to them had I known about it, but I'm very, not, not connected. Uh, is there a central place where all meetings can be listed? Or are, is there a place where, uh, other than a other than web, super, a web <coughs> buttons, I don't know that. So here's the, the question is, is there a centralized list of all these meetings? And um, uh, Shannon, if there's no objection, Shannon from Dover will tell us. Okay, um, and Shannon, I really want this into the, into the record.
you can reach it. There are four official posting places in the town of Newfane where you'll find minutes, agendas, um, announcements, etc. They are in the town clerk's office at the Newfane Market, WW Building Supply, and the South Newfane Williamsville Post Office. So you can always stop in those places. So uh, that's where you can find out, and it's also, is it also available on the town website for those who are connected? And it's also on the town website for those who never leave home. Jake. Someone just asked me, um, he didn't know how to get to the town website. The, the back page of this annual report, uh, Jake Urato, the back page of this annual report has the Newfane VT.com, that is their website they're talking about. And also, uh, there's a Front Porch Forum <coughs> website here. You can sign up and they, they send out emails. You can put in comments and that, that's how I get a lot of my news because I'm just out of town a lot. And um, it's, it's just a really great resource. People tell you what's going on, they ask your opinion and ideas go around. And also, I just learned from this last page that uh, New Fane and New has a Facebook page. And so I imagine they're posting information online. So if you're not able to get to one of those bulletin boards, they just have a ton of information, meeting minutes, and everything on the New Fane website. But these, these last two pages, we should probably all rip them out and tape them up to an inside door of our cabinets the rest of the year because it has everything on here. I, uh, I would. Is there a second? second. And uh, would you withdraw your motion for a couple of questions? Okay. <laughs> Hi there, Katie Johnson again, and Lindsay Bertram. Um, I'm a I'm a lifelong. New Vane resident. I grew up on Adams Hill. I still live on Adams Hill. We've gone from, I don't know, five or six year-round residents to well over 20 year-round homes. And I didn't know anything about the fire department closing, even though Steve Jones is my next door neighbor. I would love as much transparency as possible to be somehow, I don't know how this works because it's a private organization, but this is regarding our public safety in so many ways. Um, as such, I don't know how that works. Does anybody have any answers for me? Well, uh, what's, what's your question just exactly? How, just what's happening, how it's going to work, updates as the legal process uh -huh. continues, um, et cetera, et cetera. All of the questions that people have been talking about mm -hmm. in today's meeting. Um, where, how do we get more information as it comes? Because we are the people out there who are most directly affected by this. Mm -hmm. To the meetings. What, which which meetings? meetings? I mean, when you're saying how to get involved? No, there no, there no. There's so been, there's been no discussion. There was no public announcement, per se, that I ever saw. I was shocked to learn that it had closed. They have the right to close the doors. Excuse me. Uh, can we do a little hive mind and give Katie some ideas about how she might find out more? Do, um, they don't have I, I have ideas, but I don't usually talk at these, except to tell people who they can. One of the ways that you can find out about um, information about what's going on in the town is either to come by yourself physically to our select board meetings. Um, the select board meetings are taped by BCTV and they are on television. They are also on the town of Newfane website. So there are uh, different venues where you can um, watch and find out what is going on. Because the thing with the fire department, for example, that was discussed quite a few times at our meetings. 
Yeah, but we really didn't know either. No, we didn't know, but we, but we were discussing about um, the fact that it might close. We were not 100% sure, but if you, if you had heard that possibly because you're very interested and concerned, um, either you could have come. I'm sorry. Just, I know, it's hard to um, know what you don't know, you know. And at least you would know that, so, that something's going on that we're not 100% sure of. And that's, I'm just offering a way of finding out is to um, get involved with listening to our meetings or coming or watching it on TV in the you know, pleasure of your own home. Uh, I can give you some suggestions after the meeting when I'm not the moderator. Uh, same time next year, but New Year in, in uh, Williamsville Hall. Please bring friends with you. And um, Gary, did you have a motion? Motion to adjourn, Madam Moderator. Thank you. And Tom, Tom Padella seconded it. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. Thank you very much. The meeting is closed.